Hendersons from WCCO TV, and it's my pleasure to introduce my good friend Ron Henderson, the Fitness King, presenting Motivation, one word to help change your life. Welcome to Motivation, I'm Ron Henderson, a.k.a. the Fitness King. Should I say it again? Welcome to Motivation, I'm Ron Henderson, a.k.a. the Fitness King. Got to say it twice because I think it sounds so great. On today's show, I have the pleasure of having my friend, my good friend, Mr. Josh Driver. Josh is a photographer. He, he would like to say an aspiring uh, landscape photographer, mm -hmm. Mm -hmm. Uh, but I say he's a photographer. And uh, when, I, when I look at the work that Josh has done, I, I would just say, Josh, you hit it in all areas, whether it's landscaping, whether it's uh, shooting a, a person or whatever, I think you're awesome. So glad thank to have you on motivation. Yeah, thank you Welcome for having again. me very much. Welcome again. Yeah. Uh, Josh, before we get into this, get into actually what you do, I always ask my guests this question, and I surprise them with this question, okay. by the way. What is the one thing about you, Josh, that your wife doesn't know, <laughs> that most people don't know about you, that you want to share today? What is the one thing that would surprise people? Yeah. It could be something that you like or something you've done before, or maybe it's a bucket dream or something. Well, I was going to have an answer for you until you asked what my wife didn't know, and that kind of really <laughs> cut down my options here. So, um, well, I used to be quite a, a nerd ornithologist, like studied birds, drew them, mm -hmm. uh, recorded their songs, really kind of nerdy stuff when I was a little kid. So I think the extent of my nerdiness is unknown to everyone. I would draw them, create books, create data logs. It's pretty a small niche. Thing that I had wow. in my young life so okay. yeah no one really knows that okay do you still do that now a little bit I don't at all mm -hmm. um, although I'd love to get into bird photography at some point kind mm -hmm. of relive some of that right yeah and where, where did you grow up I grew up in Minnetonka actually not far from here and mm -hmm. then uh, moved set at seven years mm -hmm. and lived in Richfield for most of my life most of my adult life so mm -hmm. in this Twin Cities here my entire life okay did you study photography when you were in high school at all. I've fashion. never studied photography. Uh, I didn't go to college and didn't study in university. Um, just kind of picked up a camera when I went on my, my trips abroad mm -hmm. to China mm -hmm. and Iceland notably. I said I have to have a camera before I go mm -hmm. and that I always loved taking photographs but never right. said eh, this is going to become a hobby. It was more of a travel item for me. Right. Um, and so it's been the last two years that I've really picked up the camera and pursued it as a hobby and then now a business. Okay. And because I've noticed and I've seen quite a few of your pictures, you're not in a lot of them. You tend to take pictures of other other people and other things. Mm -hmm. That's pretty humble. <laughs> well, a lot of us too would say, you know, we, we, we're behind the camera for a reason. Mm -hmm. We don't want to be in front of the camera. And I, honestly, I just, I don't, I'm awkward in front of the camera. Mm -hmm. I, I think you're fine. Know. I think you're fine. So I, I prefer just to, you know, let's just take landscapes and cities yep, and yep, other things, yep, yeah. Yep. So before we get into your story, what actually drew you to landscape when you said that you tend to like that? What, yeah. what, what drew you there? I've enjoyed the outdoors since I, since I can remember, mm -hmm. um, camping, hiking, and being on the water especially. Right. Uh, it's a, I'm an introvert naturally, mm -hmm. so I get my recharge from being in the outdoors and um, it's just beautiful. I just, I am in awe when I'm out there looking mm -hmm. at the details and the grand scale of everything. Um, and so it's a recharge for me. I just love being in that environment. It's refreshing. It gets me going in my day or week or month. Okay. And uh, so photography of that scene and in that environment is then mm -hmm. really refreshing. Okay. So do you remember the first photo that you ever took hmm. that you were proud of? You know, because I think we all take pictures with our cell phone and that kind of thing, but yeah. the first photo that you actually took where you looked at that and you said, mm, I like this. You know? Yeah, I, so I was in Richville and I was sh shooting birds, mm -hmm. capturing birds, and I had uh, an old Canon, I think, with still in film. And, you know, the days where you had no idea what you shot until you <laughs> went to Target and Walmart exactly. and picked it up again. Exactly. And I was, shoot I was just shooting the birds, and again, when I say shooting, photographing, mm -hmm. obviously. Um, and I remember getting uh, a warbler, I think uh, okay. a yellow warbler, and it came up in the photo and it was zoomed in really nice, cropped really nice, yeah. and uh, that, was, that was kind of a moment of, wow, I, can, I like this photography, I like taking pictures. Okay, and what did you take? Do you remember what you took? 
Uh, the like which bird, which yeah. species? I don't. Mm -hmm. Maybe it was a yellow warbler, but I can't okay. remember. Okay. But that was kind of my earliest memory of, of camera. Right. Was that before China? Yeah. True? Quite a bit. Okay. Maybe 10, 15 years before China. Okay. So when you, and we've talked about it, because I know I, I speak a little of Mandarin, you speak a lot more Mandarin than I do. But so you went, you went to China, was it kind of like, a, almost like a revelation about that? In other words, you just, something, just a light bulb hit off and just said, hey, I think I should actually start maybe doing this. But where did it come from? Yeah. Um, it actually happened a lot later than China, okay. and, but China, I remember in, so I went there in 07 mm -hmm. and I took, it had a little megapixel camera, you know, eight megapixel oh, yeah, tiny little, point yeah. and shoot, right, sure. that oh, everyone yeah. had. Oh, yeah. Oh, yeah. And I said, I knew I had to have a camera, so I took that to China mm -hmm. in 07 and I ended up going to the Great Wall of China and just had a blast mm -hmm. clicking away. And I loved it. Uh, I was doing panoramas with yep, it. Yep. and. But then when I got home, I never really picked it up and did a whole lot with it. Right. I think I tried doing birds with it and zooming in, but you know, technology back then isn't what it is today. Okay. Um, and then you just fast forward to, you know, I went abroad to Taiwan. I lived there teaching for two years. Mm -hmm. Didn't really think about photography then at all, all right. okay. which is like I regret. But it really picked up in 2016 before my okay. trip to Iceland. Okay, 2016. And it's still pretty much landscaping, so you don't, on a regular basis, you don't shoot people. Other Correct. Than you. Okay. Correct. Right. Mm -hmm. Yeah. So I, I'll mix in black and white, macro, mm -hmm. and maybe starting to get into real estate photography and thinking about that. Okay. So I'm asking that. So in other words, you did not bring your camera to take a picture of me today. Right? I didn't. <laughs> even though you look so good, Ron. <laughs> thank you. Thank you. Thank you. Thank you. <laughs> Folks at home, I was thinking he probably he, with any luck, he brought his camera here today. And the fitness king could get just that photo moment. See, so I can put it on Facebook or something. That's right. Yeah. Okay. And I, I noticed you post a lot of stuff on Facebook. So mm -hmm. right now, where are you at with your photography, and what helped you actually get to that next level? Because you're doing some art fairs, mm -hmm. and, and I've seen a lot of stuff. You're doing a lot of stuff. So uh, just share with me. Sure. And then, then afterwards, I want you actually to maybe talk about things that you think might help my audience. Maybe it's somebody sitting there at home right now saying, hey, look, you know, I got a Canon too. I got a camera. Mm -hmm. uh, I like to shoot photography. You know, how do people get started in it? So go ahead and share your story. Well, so right now I'm, I'm really hitting the art shows, the art festivals around mm -hmm. Minnesota uh, and one in Wisconsin. So I'm mm -hmm. staying local. Yeah. But an art festival is a two or three day uh, weekend of art. You know, artists come around right. and they just, we all have 10 by 10 tents and we right. share what we do. Mm -hmm. So I'm, I'm into that and I've been backed by a mentor and the reason that I'm even sitting with you here and mm -hmm. attending all those art festivals is because of a mentor. So a professional photographer reviewed my images. For and when was this? And when was this? So the first time he did it was November last year. Mm -hmm. Who was it? Can you share his name? Uh, his name is Jay Rasmussen. Mm -hmm. Yep. He does a similar style as I do. Mm -hmm. And he reviewed my images and the first time he was scrolling through my Instagram and he just said, yeah, your composition needs work. You yeah. cut off the top of a tree here. Mm -hmm. Just, there's not a whole lot of interesting stuff here, right. you know? Um, and I did, it was okay. It was all right. I, was, right. I devoted 2018 to um, practicing. Okay. And, uh, and where'd you meet this, the, the mentor? Uh, he was referred to me by two people, a photographer friend of mine, mm -hmm. and then a woman who used to be on the board of my other job okay. at the okay. nonprofit. Okay. And so, uh, fast forward six months from the time that he critiqued me, mm -hmm. uh, he critiqued me again because one of those friends said, Josh is really improving. Mm -hmm. You should really check out his stuff again. Mm -hmm. So he invited me to his home mm -hmm. and we had a beer mm -hmm. and he reviewed my images for two and a half hours, my mm -hmm. top 75 images. And that's, if you think about it, that's a lot of time oh, yeah. by a professional to oh, give. Yeah. And uh, after that he goes, you know what? I think you should go for it. Go for the art fairs. Mm -hmm. I think you'll do well. I think your work is good enough mm -hmm. and people will buy it. And so here I am. I've just completed uh, Arter World in Northeast Minneapolis and Edina. And next week mm -hmm. is Excelsior. So I have about another 10 to 12 art shows from now okay. through fall. So when, the one next week, when is that specifically in Excelsior? Uh, that's, uh, it starts Saturday at I believe 10 a.m. Oh, this Saturday? This Saturday, mm -hmm. and it finishes on Sunday around five. And what I'm part of Excelsior? Um, I'm not quite sure yet because it's a mm -hmm. new area to me. Mm -hmm. And so I am actually taking today to um, do some promotion okay. about that on social media. Okay. Um, it's not far from the lake, mm -hmm. um, but I'd have to get back to you in the, 
Okay, okay. folks, we, we will have that information for you, so make sure that you uh, don't turn off your set. Keep watching the show at the end of the show. We'll have all that information down there so that you can check out Josh Driver. Okay. So my your second question is like, how did you get, like how did someone, I have a can and you want to get into right, it. Right. Part of it, so part one is that I had a mentor mm -hmm. who said, you know, and he, he's not someone that just, you know, tickles my ear. You know, right. he told me how, how my work was before. Mm -hmm. So Did I it hurt, did it hurt? Oh, well sure, <laughs> you, know, once, you know, you realize, but I, I like critique because mm -hmm. it's the only way to get better. You know, so many people are like, great job, but great job doesn't tell you specifically, like sure. what is good, what is, why did you say great job? Mm -hmm. So even something more detailed is helpful. Right. So a constructive critique, I'm, I'm extremely open to. Yeah. Um, so mentor was one reason. Mm -hmm. The second reason is I'm, my sister, I will quote her, she looked at me one day and goes, Josh, you're the, one of the most ambitious guys I know. Mm -hmm. And I kind of, when I go in, I, I go all in. Yeah. And so this is a year of all in. So my personality says, hey, I want to I do this and do it mm -hmm. well. Um, and so part of it's like, how much do you want it? How much right. do you want to invest in it? Right. And if you can invest in it. Right. And uh, I just try to network, uh, hang out with you. Mm -hmm. And well, you're um, good at networking, <laughs> you know. Um, and so I think it there's a point where it, not can anyone do it? Yes, that um, you just have to practice too. I mean, I spent all of 2018 two, three times a week going out with my camera yeah. everywhere I could and shooting yeah. and, and learning and mm -hmm. listening to YouTube videos, and, mm -hmm. and it's just it's, it was a lot of time now. Right. Has your camera, I'm assuming your camera has changed now in the last two years. Mm -hmm. Mm -hmm. What do you what do you use now? What do you shoot with? Well, I started with an Olympus mm -hmm. uh, mirrorless before I went to yep. Iceland, yep. and now I have upgraded to Sony in the mm -hmm. last year, in a full frame, which just means that I can blow up my images larger mm -hmm. on metal prints. Mm -hmm. And you have one of those here with you too. I do. Exactly. Mm -hmm. You mind showing it? Uh, not a problem. This is my most popular print. It's mm -hmm. called The Rock, and mm -hmm. it's from uh, Grand Marais. Yep. Mm -hmm. Minnesota up north on the North Shore okay. and uh, nice it's, it's a good fall autumn shot I took last October mm hmm so do you, what does uh, like a painting like that as an example what does it sell for this is 285 okay and I go as mm -hmm. the next step, le, uh, step up is a 30 by 40 mm -hmm. and that's 455 right. but I do as small as uh, little cards like five by seven cards mm -hmm. so four dollars so you sell greeting cards too? I do. Yeah, mm -hmm. Mm -hmm. it's a good market. Yeah, it's a good. It's been, a, it's been, a, yeah. it's been a good, uh, yeah. good item at the shows so far. Right, good for you. Good for you. Let me ask you this question now. Your mentor, he's a photographer. Mm -hmm. He wasn't worried about competition. It's a great question, actually. Yeah. It's a great question. Um, no, uh, he admitted. He's like he looked me in the eye and said, "By doing this, you're going to be developing into the competition." Right. And and yet he's continued to give me tips, tricks, mm -hmm. mini secrets, mm -hmm. I would call them, and um, you know bouncing ideas off each other. Right. And it, it's almost like a cooperative uh, competitor. Yeah, that's uh, good. Something like that. And so the relationship really, and he's investing in me. Mm -hmm. He used to be a Bethel professor. Really, but okay. he did so okay. well that he's mm -hmm. uh, launching into photography. Okay. Mm -hmm. Now now you also with that that's metal. How did you? Yeah. What was the transition going into metal? And was that hard? Is that hard to do? I just started with metal uh, for a number of reasons. Mm -hmm. uh, one, I've loved metal prints mm -hmm. before I even got into photography. The vividness, the detail, the right. color, you don't get in canvas and traditional prints. It's not for everyone. Sure. I, I know a lot of people that when they go by the, the tent at the art fair, it's like, sure. oh, more metal prints. Mm -hmm. It could be a generational thing. Sure. Um, people want more subtle, dull look, and that's right. great. These just pop, and I love how the light hits it. And you can okay. just go in there and see all the details. Yeah. Um, so that's those are a few reasons. Um, how do you print? How do you print on metal, by the way? So it's called dye sublimation, and that's the fancy word. Okay. Um, down in Bloomington, there's a twenty-five thousand dollar press. So I work mm -hmm. with a guy down there who has his own print shop. Mm -hmm. And what we do is I send him the digital image. He puts it onto uh, transfer paper, which yep. is meant to release the ink easily right. yep. and mm -hmm. so we layer that on a metal and so one side is aluminum and yep. the other side mm -hmm. is like this high gloss polyurethane type finish mm -hmm. and then we use that press 400 degrees and we bake basically mm -hmm. the the transfer paper image onto that coating okay and so it's almost like i'm baking the image right is that a long process 
You know, it takes between 10 and 15 minutes, I think. It's, okay. it's pretty quick. Pretty quick mm -hmm. for that. Mm -hmm. Interesting. Yeah. Now, I, I've met your, obviously, your parents before. Are they supporting you with this too? What are they? What are they I mean, because you're paying you know how parents are. Yeah. Oh, Josh, uh, you're not going to make any money with that. Yeah. Uh, what kind of support have you gotten from your parents? Uh, my parents, 100%. Mm -hmm. 100%. Uh, they, they've seen me pursue different hobbies and mm -hmm. um, like I pursued cooking and gardening mm -hmm. and just kind of like I'm, I'm big into that. So Cooking? That's competition with cooking with the king. Hey, I'm sorry. Oh, I'm not <laughs> supposed to say that. No. <laughs> That's competition with cooking. I don't put any of that on, on <laughs> no. mine. It's just my wife. Um, mm -hmm. But uh, they're all in. Uh, my, my wife's parents, mm -hmm. not as much, mm -hmm. but they have, even if mm -hmm. they've had any concerns, they have really they they were all in this weekend. I could right. not have done the Cedina Art Fair without them mm -hmm. and their help mm -hmm. and some of their comments afterward. So both sets of parents have supported me 100%. Good, yeah. good, 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 good. So you do the Art Fairs, how else do you promote your work? What else do you do for, 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 to promote? Well, I hang out with you okay. uh, uh, and then uh, I have social media, so I have Instagram, I have mm -hmm. Facebook, I have a website, and my website has more of my work than you mm -hmm. see at the art fairs. Mm -hmm. What is your website? JoshDriverPhotography.com, mm -hmm. and uh, I go around and meet, you know, network with other mm -hmm. photographers. Um, I used to have my work at the Dunn Brothers in Arden Hills mm -hmm. as a gallery display, and I'll be back there in the fall. Yep. And um, I'm always looking for opportunities. I've emailed mm -hmm. companies and yep. say, here's who I am, I'm mm -hmm. an emerging artist. Yep. So just all sorts of creative ways to get my myself out there. Right. You have some that they accept, other ones don't, I would assume. There's right? a ton that don't ever reply, right. you know, or okay. call back or email back, and then there's there's others that work out. Right. And so I'm still learning about that. So as mm -hmm. this is my first year, um, I formed Josh Driver Photography LLC this past January, mm -hmm. learning a lot. You know, what what's our, what are trends, right. you know, what, what these costs are, what people like, yeah. uh, all that. What, what do the millennials tend to like? What type of work do they tend to like? The, well, the metal prints. So when I mentioned a generational gap, yeah. possibly, yeah. what I've seen is that perhaps younger generations like metal more, mm -hmm. and older generations are more used to that um, framed matte style. Right. Obviously, there's crossover and there's not generalizations, but right. I've seen maybe trends like that. Mm -hmm. um, and the millennials are on Instagram, or the young folks, we're all on, we're all on Instagram, mm -hmm. and that's kind of the main media to um, get work out there, mm -hmm. uh, but that's still one uh, grouping because not everyone's on Instagram. Right. And uh, yeah. yeah, and so I want really my goal is to get my work in front of people face to face as much as possible. Right. Right. Because you can know me differently on in person sure. than online, right. and so I'm one of thousands upon thousands of photographers with work online. Right. But if you meet me, maybe there's a chance something happens. Right. So that's that's a goal. I wanna I wanna. Even if it's not um, selling work, I want to meet people and just say, here's what I do. Here, take a look at what I do. I prefer that to online, but you need an online presence. Right, yeah, I would agree. Now, the painting, like the one you have there, metal, so they just put that up on a wall just like it is. Mm -hmm. Okay. Yeah, this, so. what we just saw, it comes with a custom frame on the back and mm -hmm. it comes with a wire. So you just need one little pin, mm -hmm. boom, right into the drywall, you're done. You mm -hmm. can frame those. Uh, we're working on framing uh, right now, right. but these come fully framed, ready to go. Right. Where do you see yourself two years from now? Well, we've, so this is year one, kind of experimenting right. how we do. In business standpoint, In business, yeah. yep. Mm -hmm. um, I've kind of told people I'm, my goal within three to five years is to make photography 100% my uh, full-time job. Mm -hmm. So with two years, I'd be hoping I'd be one year away from that. And two years would be two years of art fairs, mm -hmm. um, perhaps my own gallery, <clears throat> steady gallery studio somewhere. Mm -hmm. And um, still working on the, the shorter term. Mm -hmm. So that's a good question that I'm still thinking about. Right. Mm -hmm. So is this your full time job now? No, it's. Mm -hmm. What else do you do? So you 32 hours a week, uh, Monday through Thursday, I am a office manager at the Hospitality Center for Chinese. Mm -hmm. I've been there for five years. I used to be the program coordinator, mm -hmm. and our goal is simply to present hospitality to Chinese and now international students, mm -hmm. as we've just opened up to all internationals, um, to receive them warmly in Minnesota. We recognize that they come very far away to no yes. family, no friends, mm -hmm. and we want to say we have volunteers here. We have a community that says we understand or we want to help in your right. transition. Mm -hmm. 
And so I do that. That's my real job, yeah, you know. Yeah. Um, and photography takes place whenever I can outside of that, and usually Friday through Sunday okay. and early mornings. I wake up super early to do a lot of sunrise work. Mm -hmm. um, and the job is very flexible, allows me to do that. Yeah. But the center, the center has been around since 1992. I've been there five years, and it's it's been great. Yes, yes. When I when I see images of you on Facebook, the first thing I think is, how do you have time to do all this stuff? That's what that's what I think. You know, because yeah. it seems like every time I see you, you're you're off on this trip, you're off on that vacation, but you see you work 32 hours a week at the center. Yeah, yeah someone commented on that uh, this morning. I can't remember if it was my mom or someone, but mm -hmm. they say. How, yeah, how do you fit that in? Right, and right. I just maybe that's part of the ambition, um, right. and I got I got still got energy. That's great, um, mm -hmm. but it's waking up in the morning, morning, and you know going somewhere. So for example, mm -hmm. um, let's say I work I work at nine eight uh, nine a.m. Yep. I can wake up at five in the morning, drive a few hours away, mm -hmm. shoot in the morning, and then go to a coffee shop nearby and work. Mm -hmm. And so it allows me that flexibility to do both, right, and then. Okay. Coordinating with my wife and having some trips on the weekends, and mm -hmm. there you go. Does your wife she shoot too? No, she's a full-time Spanish teacher up in Forest Lake, mm -hmm. and she's gonna. She just committed to her fourth year starting mm -hmm. next fall. Um, she has said has said though she would like to learn more, mm -hmm. and I have a second camera, so we've talked mm -hmm. about uh, doing more of that together. It's she's got a good eye. She she has a good compositional eye. Okay. Yeah. Yeah, I got one eye, so I probably, would, <laughs> probably wouldn't be good at it. I got one eye, probably got one eye. So, so the next thing coming up is success. Show anything after that? Yeah. So after that, uh, so June is the busiest month. They have five shows uh, back to back. So it's Excelsior coming back to Minneapolis for Stone Arch, uh, heading out to Wyzetta right. for a show, and then Spring Green, Wisconsin, mm -hmm. which is four hours to the east. Then we're uh, going to a wedding. We're going to Utah and hopefully taking a day of photography out there. Oh, it's beautiful. I you just know, came back from there. Oh, yeah. it's, I can't wait. I can't yeah. wait. Beautiful. And um, then up to Grand Marais, the North Shore. Mm -hmm. And then uh, from about mid-July through mid-October, there's a scattering of shows, about mm -hmm. two a month. Uh, some other notable cities that mm -hmm. I'll be at is uh, Red Wing, mm -hmm. um, Loring Park, mm -hmm. Lakeville, mm -hmm. and uh, I'm not sure about Stillwater. Duluth is, okay. is another one. Okay. So, and I'll have all the art shows on my website, joshdriverphotography.com. Go to gal uh, art shows to yep. see all my dates. Good. So now, somebody watching my show, they're listening to you. They're saying, "Hey, look, this guy. He's a photographer. He's mentioning all these shows." Now, my assumption would be, and I don't know if my audience is thinking this or not. You have to be selling some of your prints at these shows because it'd be hard to book all these shows. Am I right? Or right. Right. Oh. Well, there's an investment yeah. cost. Sure. That, you know, a lot of that's startup. You know, it's a new right. business, so there's yeah. a bunch of investment and startup costs. Yeah. Mm -hmm. But the two shows that I've been at so far have paid for mm -hmm. the rental fees yeah. and the application fees. So mm -hmm. I'm pleased with that. So overall, we're pleased with the first two shows and how it's gone. It's propelled us into you know going into the third one. Right. I like that. I like that. Okay. So you're gonna have that all on your website. Uh, what else do you do for fun? Oh, I love soccer. I love it. I've been playing since I was four, and um, mm -hmm. my favorite time of the day is Saturday at 9 a.m. I play with guys for six years. For six years, we've been playing together. Oh, wow. Same group, a kind of a core group. Mm -hmm. uh, that's my um, compete area. That's okay. where I get my exercise. And mm -hmm. I also love hockey. I'm a wild fan. Not as diehard as I used to right. be, because okay. sports has kind of mm -hmm. become less and less of a priority these days, but mm -hmm. I love going to the wild games. I also love music, love finding new music, right. um, a lot of stuff people probably have never heard of <laughs> that yeah. I listen to. Yeah. And I love cooking. Uh -huh. I'm not, you know, maybe not as good as this guy here, but my, uh, I love cooking penne vodka. That's my, okay. that's my dish. Okay. So, okay. Yeah. All right. And you said you worked at the Center for Chinese. Mm -hmm. Do you mind saying something in Chinese so if some of the, your friends out there are listening about even mentioning the fact that what's coming up with the art fairs, your website? Can you say something in Chinese? Ah, uh, so Iran. Well, but you know, you 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 sure when will I go into? Well, may I go into? Ah, so I was just in. Ah, I was in Huashan Jia. My work, ah, work for five years. Ah, but I was invited to come to your my art festival. Ah, uh, come to my photography. So I just said uh, I I worked at the. Hospitality Center for five years, and I welcome you to my art show. 
Uh, yeah, you put me on the spot there. I know, I know. You know? And <laughs> whenever people say speak Chinese, I'm like, what, what, what Chinese do I say? Right, but yeah. Yeah. You, you put on hua, <laughs> <laughs> yeah. 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 Nice job. Nice I job. Have. I have. Lately, it's tui bula. It's, uh, tui bula a, it's a little bit. regressed a little bit. Right. But. Yeah, but you sound, <laughs> you sound good. Thanks, Ron. Folks, you've been watching Motivation. If you want to get a hold of Josh Driver, remember, just go to his website. We're going to have lots of good information on there. I want to just share this with you before we end Motivation. If there's something out there that you've thought about doing maybe it's not photography but maybe it's maybe writing a book maybe it's singing i believe the world has to hear your voice and i have stuff that i'm working on that i'm not going to share with my audience right now but i'm i'm really just trying to motivate you to say take that next step so you're watching you see motivation every week I have great guests on you're listening to what they're doing but i want you to take that next step in your life you either live for something or you die for nothing. When are you gonna get off the couch and decide to do something with your life? Would you agree with me on that, Josh? That's what I'm trying to do. Yes. And you don't always know what's gonna happen, but I'm someone that, uh, I'm not ignorant of like, if you just do it, you'll get it. Right. That's not how life works, but man, if there's a chance, I'm gonna try. And thankfully I have the support to do it. So right. I'm there. Right. And I wish you well. I love the work. I love the work that you've Thank done. You. Thank you. Uh, I've looked at all the stuff that you have on on Facebook. You're, you're great at what you do. Uh, unbelievable, actually. Very, very good. Very kind. Out of my league. Out of my league. So I'll just stick to doing my bonsai trees by hand. <laughs> I make little bonsai trees. So all right, right on. we all have our gifts. So, right. folks, That's you've right. been watching Motivation with Ron Henderson, aka the Fitness King, and the one and only Josh Driver. <laughs> <laughs> He's a photographer, a landscape photographer. Does great work. Make sure you check him out. You can watch the rest of this too. In any time, we usually have it on YouTube as well. But you're watching Channel 6. We're going to see you next time on Motivation. Stay fit. Stay blessed. We'll see you next time on Motivation. Good job. Thank you. To book Ron Henderson for your next event, call 612-386-8178 or send an email to ron at fitnessking.com. That's ron at fitnessking.com.